Hello friends, Techman Pat here. Today we're going to do a really quick video. I'm hoping it's going to be quick. Uh, I asked a little while back if you'd like to see how to set up a personal home VPN for you, yourself, or your family and friends. I mean, it's pretty easy. But just to do that, it's a few steps and I'm going to show you how to set it up on the actual router. And we're using a TP-Link router. And basically, this process should be exactly the same for a lot of other routers or modems. Um, and then we're going to set it up on an iPhone so you can connect to your home network from your phone. And so access things like your own um, maybe a NAS server or maybe a Plex server or anything like that. And also we're going to set it up on a laptop, a Windows laptop. It'll be the same process for a Mac, but because I've got a Windows laptop and an iPhone, it should work out pretty well. So let's get started with going to the TP-Link uh, modem page that you have. And usually it should be a link called 192.168.1.1. One. So here we have, I've logged in already, and uh, obviously TP-Link uh, should look the same on most modems, unless it's a very old modem, and you go to advanced, um, you'll see here on the menu, VPN right at the bottom. All you have to do is tap into it, and we're gonna do an open VPN. And the reason we're doing open VPN is because open VPN is actually free to download as an app for a lot of other devices. So we tap open VPN, and then we get this page here. Really simple, we tap enable VPN. Uh, we can leave the service port as 1195 and we'll use the service type as UDP. And here's the subnet mask. So this is really interesting. There's a couple of things we need to discuss about this. Your subnet mask is what the VPN connection will get as an IP address. So what that means is that when it logs into your network, you can clearly see who is on your local network and the 192.168 and who is on a separate VPN layer. And you can protect yourself with a lot of security around what that VPN section of group of networked devices can actually do and if they can you know, tunnel in. So what that means is that we can then select what client access they get. And so in this case, you can say, hey, only home network only. So when you connect via that VPN, you only get access to your networked devices. You don't get to speak outside of the internet. Now, when you think of a VPN, you think, well, hang on, I connect to a VPN and I get to see all these other websites that are geo-blocked to me. So that's when you have to select internet at home. But again, I'm just letting you know, this is not for like skipping through, um, I don't know, geo-blocks for um, Netflix or anything like that, because what you're gonna be technically doing is you're gonna might be, you know, 100 kilometers from your home, you get to connect to the network here and use it as if you're sitting at home to the internet. So there is some applications such as uh, security things that let's say you're at the office uh, and you need to access a web server, they'll say that you have to use a VPN to be look like to look like you're on site and that way you can access that file server or that web server or whatever it might be. This is pretty much the same thing, but at home and you don't need massive IT support staff to uh, to make that happen. So we select this, I'm gonna select internet and home network. I'm gonna click save. And then two things we need. We need to generate a certificate and we need to generate and uh, export the configuration file. So we're gonna click generate. It's gonna generate a certificate. And this basically means it's kind of like locking it in and um, setting up these things as the settings for your configuration file. When you connect to your uh, VPN, there's two things you need to consider, and that is your internet or your connection needs to have a static IP or a custom DNS or dynamic DNS, which basically means that no matter how often your IP changes from your provider, your RSP, you will get to then still connect to your home without having to remember the new number. Some providers, some RSPs provide you with a login through the web that you can actually check what your IP is and you can use that to put into your configuration file. But what you can do instead on a TP link is actually create a custom dynamic DNS. So we'll just navigate to that. Now, click network, dynamic DNS, and you select TP link. And then you can log in through your TP link cloud and create that. So we'll continue through to this. So at the moment, my IP is dynamic, which means it will change all the time. So if we go to internet and we click on advanced network, 
and we go to dynamic DNS, you can see here that under the login that I've created, my DNS is this, which I shouldn't be showing, which I won't be showing, um, tplinkdns.com. That means if I type in that address, no matter how many times my IP address changes from RSP, it will always be that link. That means that it will have this locked in and it's bound and I can unbind it if required. So therefore, anytime I put in that link, I will end up here. So once that's done, we need to go back to your VPN and go back to open VPN and then we can tap export our configuration. So tap export and we create a client OPVN and I will show you that in a moment. As you can see here, client underscore one OVPN. This is the configuration file that you will need to take to any of your devices to log in. So let's do that. Navigate to your store, wherever you are, either on Android or Apple, type in open VPN, and it should be the first one on the list after the advert. So open VPN connect, make sure to install it or open it. When you do, you will see this page and you can see that it is empty and you will need to start installing your imported profile, which we created from our TP link modem. So navigate to your folder where you have the file. There it is client one open VPN, tap the little arrow there, open it up, scroll across and select more. This is on iOS, find the app open VPN, tap on it and it should ask you to add the actual profile into the app. Click add, allow to add the VPN configuration to your phone. This means you can switch it on and off from the iPhone's main settings menu. And there it is, it's all done. You can rename it with a little pencil, but now we'll turn off Wi-Fi and we'll switch it on. There you go, it has connected. And now we'll go back and open Google Chrome and we're gonna to navigate to FreeNAS, which is my network attached storage. NAS, <laughs> 192.168.1.120. And as you can see, it is loading. And on the top right hand side corner, as you can see, I'm on my 4G connection. That means I am now locally able to access my network. It's a little bit slow, obviously, because we're on 4G, but it loads up perfectly fine and you can access anything else that you have on your local network. All right, we're on a Windows computer and now we're gonna search for OpenVPN on Google and we're gonna search for this button here, OpenVPN Connect for Windows. Now this is the same thing for Mac and obviously if you have a Mac, you'll just install the Mac version, which is OpenVPN Connect V3. All we have to do is tap download OpenV3 Connect. Once it's downloaded, we're gonna install it. Next, accept, next, install. And now you wanna make sure you've downloaded your settings file, which is right here, client OpenVPN1. And you can see the extension here is OVPN. And now the icon is showed because we've just completed installing the OpenVPN client. We tap finish and we can see the new icon for the program is right here. The simplest thing to do is just click client and it'll start the actual process. I agree. Okay. And would you like to import this file? Client one OVPN, click okay. And here is the link that we're using, which was created by the TP link DNS. And we're just gonna click add. And that's it. Okay, once you've imported the profile, turn it on and make sure you are on a separate network. For now, I've actually connected to my 4G phone and I will be able to use that network. Tap here, you'll see it'll connect pretty quickly. You'll see the speed, duration and so on. And all I have to do to test is open up a web browser and I'm just gonna navigate to that free NAS connection I showed you on the phone. 192.168.1.120. Clicking on it will take me to the UI and ask me to log in, which means I have full access to my network now. Obviously it's a little bit slow. It is going via the 4G phone back to your network and it is using your own internet. But this means that if you are away or overseas and you want to access things from your home or from work, you'll be able to do this with your own TP-Link router without having to buy expensive VPNs. Friends, thank you very much for watching. I hope this helped you set up the VPN connection through your TP-Link modem on your phone and laptop. It's pretty simple. There's really no configuration required. It's just managing to save, download, and, and make sure everything's correct before you then go out and start using it. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And also let me know in the comments if you'd like any other videos like this where we go through and set up some um, VPNs or anything like that. Do leave your comments below and hopefully we can do that. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Make sure to subscribe and like. Bye.